why the U.S. could have a housing boom over the next five years. Not a bust, but a boom. Very interesting and somewhat convincing. So let's dive into this Advisor Perspectives article. I'm not even sure who wrote this. Team knowledge, team of knowledge leaders. I don't know who that is. The United, but check this out. Dateline 8-2, 2021. The U.S. is just at the beginning of a housing boom that could last for the next five years. Of course, most folks who are either homeowners or in the market to buy a home understand that prices have gone up substantially over the last year. Indeed, the case Shiller 20 city average of home prices is up about 17% year over year. The uh, U.S. only saw annual prices like this from the 2002 to 2005 housing boom period. And we know what happened after that. But what are we what we are focusing on here is not price increases, but actual housing construction activity and all of its knock on economic effects. In contrast, the early not housing boom that was at least part and driven by shoddy lending standards, 100 percent. This one appears to be squarely driven by an utter lack of housing activity uh, inventory. As readers can see the next chart, existing houses for sale per working age adult have never been lower in the history of our data set. That goes back to 2000, probably 1998. Houses for sales per adult are a fraction of the levels that exist in the 2002 to 2005 boom. And here's the insanity. Look at that. As uh, existing houses per sale per working age adult have never been lower in the history of our data set. Okay, so in of itself, that that just means people aren't selling their homes. That in of, that doesn't mean anything necessarily. They might say, um, "I don't want." I, I mean, who knows? That in of itself, that doesn't mean anything other than there isn't a uh, a, a glut of sales out there. There's very few, there's a lot of fewer houses being sold. That's what that would tell you, but there's more to this actually. It's interesting nonetheless. The lack of inventory, houses being sold, as opposed to price pressures appear to be a larger explanation of the deteriorating sentiment of home buyers. Uh, it's true that the University of Michigan's Good Town to Buy House survey hit a record low in June, but we observed that housing affordability does not necessarily appear to be the primary driver. Indeed, not only is absolute housing affordability at levels consistent with or better than most of the 2009 and 2020 period, but income adjusted mortgage payments for new home buyers remains very accommodative. For this, we can thank the 30 year fixed rate mortgage, which is below 3%. Currently, another year or two of 17% price increases or rising mortgage rates would eat into housing affordability, but we think more likely outcomes that building activity accelerates on a sustained basis, just as soon as the supply chain disruptions ease, ease around materials, appliances, and labor. Just want to go with this. So this is the no existing houses per sale, per working age adult. All right, so again, that's, so you look down your street, how many signs are out there? Then on top, not that many. Then on top of that, how many are being built? So the question is, are, they, are less people putting their house on the market for sale? Probably and less uh, houses being built as well. That's just interesting. But anyway, so here is the, uh, so we, we have a, it's not because people are being priced out of the market. They're just not. Housing affordable index is quite reasonable. And, and right here, it's, uh, I mean, it's this is not saying that it's not affordable. It's just saying it's actually quite affordable. You can see right here, here's the market right here, 2005 and six and seven, and then just falling off a cliff this is like the inverse of the uh, of the prices. So the higher it is, the more you can afford essentially. So we're still pretty high for affordability and they should label that a little bit better, but still real payment for and this. These two things go hand in hand, real payment for first time homeowners. It's a uh, 43% of your uh, payments per, I'm not sure what that is, but anyway, you can see it's dropped quite a bit. What is that? It's 40. Can we bring that up? Oh, geez. That doesn't do anything. Uh, first time personal income wage and salary disbursement. I just challenged that to some degree just because I wonder how much of that is just a fake money that Biden and Trump are giving. But still, you can see it's way down here. Anyway, real payment for first time home buyers has gone down significantly. First time housing payments over per, I can't see it, per, so I don't know. For person, anyway, following the housing bust of the 
2007 to nine period and the excess inventory it created, home builders responded by slashing construction of new homes right there. You, housing unit construction, shoops. New home construction fell from 2 million units per year in 2006, which is too many, to less than 1 million per year for the entire 2009 to 2020 period. Less than 1 million for, per year for the entire 2009 through 2020 period on average. Yeah, but they've been ramping it back up there. So, but still, I mean, you think how many, I mean, this, how many more people live in America than did back here in the 70s and the 80s and 90s? And we're right back here is, you know, the, basically I'd say the median right there, probably right here, actually 1,500, 1. 1.5 million. But this is with a hell of a lot less people in the United States. Isn't that crazy? Huh. I don't know why they say the uh it's been less than a it's been less than a, a million. It's occurred a time. Uh less uh less than a million units per year for the entire 2009-20. It doesn't look like that. I guess if you average it all, I guess it probably is. Yeah, probably if you average it. But it's been rising from five hundred thousand to fifteen one point five million, so that's a three hundred percent increase. But anyway. This occurred at a time when working age population in the U.S. increased by 9 million, the people most likely to buy a house. And the total population increased by 25 million, 100%. That's what I'm saying. So 25 more million people here, 9 more of home buyer million working age people here. And I find that interesting. The lack of construction for the last decade, and especially over the last five years when a lack of inventory has become a major issue, appears to be significant, if not the primary driver of house price appreciation. The solution is build more houses. The hard part is the U.S. is short of a lot of housing units, including the five-year cumulative construction of unit housing units per working age adult stands at just 0.36 compared to an average of 0.48 going back to 1980. So here we go. It's coming off the bottom, but 0.36 compared to the average of 0.48. Five-year cumulative new construction housing per working age person. Sat said, in other words, the U.S. will need to construct as many homes as it did during the peak housing boom years in each of the next five years in order to get new construction per adult back to normal levels. Said differently again, the U.S. will need to construct 50% more units each year over the next five years as we, constru as, uh, as we construct over the last five years on average. That's what you call boom. So it needs to increase it by 50% over the last five years. In the last five years, we had a little bit of a boom here, a little bit of a run-up the last five years, but we need even more than that. Just get back to where we were. Another interesting wrinkle is that U.S. home building stocks, this is interesting, which have historically been in the penalty box for the last decade, currently sport an average PE of 8.8. .8. Now that's interesting. That might be an opportunity there. Very good article. I, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts, man. Anyone in the building industry? Um, this is you know, hard, hard to find labor, hard to find supply. But, you know, listen, my man, Simon, over at Uneducated Economist, price of limber, uh, lump, limber, lumber is uh, falling off a cliff here. So that's that's good, right? Uh, will there be the, the demand to, or the actually the ability to build to meet the demand? Should we look at home builder ETFs? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a look. I'll do a video on that. All right, we'll see you.